Attack on Hillary. Let's play hardball. Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Let me start tonight with this. We'll get to the bad politics in Ukraine much later in the show, but let me start with the bad politics here in this country. Did you notice, and this is certainly a nasty fact, that the same hawks who want to street fight some exchange of trash talk with Russian President Putin, who aren't afraid at all to get, our, get in the old Cold War raging again, also can't quit that nasty little side war they're fighting with Hillary Clinton. There they go again, blasting Secretary Clinton over Benghazi again this weekend. Benghazi, it's how they say, remember the Alamo. It's their way of yelling, Tora, 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 or Geronimo. What are they getting at? That Hillary Clinton and everyone else on the Democratic side is a traitor who runs and hides in the face of the enemy, who lets Americans die, then lies about it. I watched Susan Rice when she appeared on Meet the Press in September of 2012. I watched her yesterday when she did it again. And unlike the hawks pushing for trouble abroad and division at home, I also read the bipartisan report of the Senate Intelligence Committee saying that what Rice said in 2012 about Benghazi carried the hard, difficult core of truth, that the raid which killed our ambassador resulted from the attack that day in Cairo, which resulted from that crazy anti-Islamic video produced by some crazed right winger out in California. So why did John McCain and Daryl Ice and the rest keep yelling Benghazi? Why do they like to say how much they respect Hillary Clinton, especially her work as Secretary of State, and then continue to accuse her of cover-up, going AWOL in the face of the enemy, and God knows what else? <clears throat> Does Issa truly believe that Hillary Clinton ordered American troops who could have tried saving Ambassador Chris Stevens over in Libya to stand down? Why would she do that to a friend? Stephen was her friend. Why would she deliberately let him die? What are you saying, Mr. Issa? What are you getting at Senator McCain, do you or do you not accept that it was the intelligence community that called the attack of Benghazi the work of extremists? That it was the CIA itself, led by Petraeus, that struck the word Al Qaeda from its description of the attack? Which brings to me the partisan question Is this all the Republicans have? Is this their silver bullet to keep Hillary Clinton from the White House? Is it this dishonest, over the top, festering over Benghazi? Alex Wagner is the host of Now, weekdays at 4 Eastern MSNBC. And she's joining us right now. David Corn is Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones and an MSNBC political analyst. David, it is relentless. Yeah. It's continuing through this hour. We're getting it all day because of what happened yesterday. Meet the press. Yeah. I looked at Susan Rice. I don't know why she apologized at all. She said she was right, right. but in some ways she said she wasn't completely right. On all the essential points, why there was a Benghazi attack, copycat from Cairo. Why probably was there an attack on Cairo? Because this crazy anti-Islamic video that ran went viral. Right. What, what, why don't they just say, damn it, we were right the first time and keep moving on? Well, I think for the Republicans and for John McCain, this has become almost a theological issue. They just have to it's go religion. back. It's, it's, it's religion. It's not, it doesn't make sense. If you sit down and go over the facts as you just did and we can do it over and over again, they will not change their position. They came out and they really crucified Susan and Rice for no good reason. You know, she was talking about intelligence talking points that have been put together by but the CIA. But she didn't run it for today. anything, by the way. Yeah, she's not running You know what, they're going after. Go but, ahead. But, but when she was up for Secretary of State, you know, McCain and Lindsey Graham came out. They called her not qualified, not competent. She was disconnected from reality. It was an ad hominem attack on a woman who's spent years doing public service, the type of public service that John McCain says he's proud of. You know, his campaign slogan, what was it? Country first? No, it's not country first first. It's politics first. And maybe it's even get Hillary first over everything else. Well, I don't get it. Anyway, National Security Advisor Susan Rice was back on Meet the Press this weekend, and she told David Greger she has no regrets about what she said nearly 18 months ago in the aftermath of that Benghazi attack. Let's watch her. What I said to you that morning and what I did uh, in, in, every day since was to share the best information that we had at the time. The information I provided, which I explained to you, uh, was what we had at the moment. It could change. I commented that this was uh, based on what we knew on that morning, was provided to me and my colleagues and indeed to Congress by the intelligence community. And that's been well validated in, in many different ways since. And that information uh, turned out in some respects not to be 100% correct. But the notion that somehow I or anybody else in the administration misled the American people is patently false. And I think that that's been uh, amply demonstrated. 
What she meant by not 100% correct was that when she first testified, you'll hear, she said there was a demonstration that turned into an attack. But all of it was a result, by all the best estimates by the bipartisan Senate Intelligence Committee, of going back to a copycat behavior by the crowds and the bad people, of course, who did this horrible thing of killing our ambassador and his colleagues. But all of it resulted from this crazy fervor of watching television, seeing what happened in Cairo that same day, the same kind of assault. And that itself was caused by this going viral of this crazy anti-Islamic tape. Anyway, here's what Susan Rice said five days after the Benghazi attack when she was on Meet the Press in September of 16. September 16, 19, oh, 2012. Let's watch. Putting together the best information that we have available to us today, our current assessment is that what happened in Benghazi was, in fact, initially a spontaneous uh, reaction to what had just transpired hours before in Cairo, uh, almost a copycat uh, of, of the demonstrations against our facility in Cairo, uh, which were prompted, of course, by the video. What we think then transpired in Benghazi is that uh, opportunistic uh, extremist elements uh, came uh, to the consulate uh, as this was unfolding. Well, those comments sparked right-wing charges of a cover-up. The only problem is that we now know the substance of what Susan Rice said right there was largely accurate. It was a copycat based originally on the m movie. Anyway, start with her central assertion that the attack is believed to have been a reaction to the unfolding events, initially set off by the Islamic, anti-Islamic video produced out in California, which was pretty much confirmed last month by a bipartisan Senate report, as I said. That committee, the bipartisan committee, found, quote, intelligence suggests that the attack was not a highly coordinated plot, but was opportunistic. Some intelligence suggests the attacks were likely put together in short order following that day's violent protests in Cairo against an inflammatory video. She's, she's right on the mark there in her early testimony in 2012. An exhaustive New York Times report from back in December of 2013 also found that, quote, contrary to claims by some members of Congress, it was fueled in large part by anger at an American-made video denigrating Islam. Well, the right wing also attacked uh, Susan Rice for using the word extremist instead of terrorist. But that word choice came directly from the intelligence community's talking points. We know that now. And they also attacked the administration for removing the words al-Qaeda from the talking point. Well, that was removed by the CIA, headed by David Petraeus. He's the one that said, don't say al-Qaeda. According to that Senate committee report, the reference to al-Qaeda was removed to protect intelligence sources and methods. Alex, this seems to be not just a tempest in a teapot, but an attempt to destroy the reputations of Susan Rice and to get at the person she was speaking for that day, the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who people like John McCain always like to say how chummy they are with her. But here they are accusing her of a cover-up, and worse than that, you know what they're implying, that somehow she led to a state stand down in the military, let her friend get killed. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Chris. I think that this has hurt Susan Rice insofar as it cost her the Secretary of State position. One could argue she still has a highly influential position in the White House, but she paid a price for this. But that apparently is not enough pain to extract from this administration if you are a Republican. I find the most disconcerting part of this, you just laid out all the actual facts behind this attack in Benghazi. You talked about an, a, a very comprehensive reported piece by David Kirkpatrick in the New York Times, which should settle any lingering doubts, a Senate committee finding. What we now are dealing with is a group of conservatives in a Republican Party for whom facts are fungible. And they will take any bit of data and spin it any way they want, whether that's data, economic data from the Congressional Budget Office, whether that is a bipartisan Senate committee finding, whether that is actual declassified intelligence from, from the intelligence agencies themselves. There is no agreed upon axis anymore. And that makes everything from okay. deciding on economic policy to climate change to national security incredibly difficult. Well, here's the hard part for me. Uh, I always have a mixed view of John McCain for what he's done for our country. His service to the country is unassailable. But here he is, not surprisingly, John McCain has jumped in and he is not satisfied with what Rice said yesterday on Meet the Press. Let's watch him. Look at the passion behind this guy. Here he is, going after him. I'm almost speechless because it's patently obvious, first of all, that Susan Rice had no reason to be on the program. She had no involvement in it. Second of all, she read talking points that we are now beginning to believe came from the White House, which were absolutely false. For uh, Susan Rice to say such a thing, I think uh, it's a little embarrassing, to tell you the truth. 
Well, I think it's embarrassing for Senator McCain not to do his homework. He should know the facts are in, and that Rice was right, and and everybody was right here on the main points. Anyway, meanwhile, this morning, Republican strategist, the guy who called Ohio the wrong way, Carl Rove, also took issue <laughs> with Ambassador Rice. No surprise, he gets paid to do it. Here he is. Let's watch Rove and in action. There are two things wrong with this. One is the arrogance of the moment. I have no regrets about lying to the American people. And second of all, the continuing stubbornness of this cover-up. The attack happens on a Wednesday night. By Thursday morning, the Libyan president is telling America this is a terrorist incident. By Sunday morning, Susan Rice is, is picked out. I, I, I feel sorry for her in a way. She was a patsy. But the American people deserve to have an answer. Who concocted this scheme? Who briefed Susan Rice? Well, we know all the answers. The answer was the CIA told her what to say. General David Petraeus, who's beloved on the right, and maybe he should be, but he's beloved on the right. David Petraeus wrote these talking points, said, don't say al-Qaeda, don't say terrorists, say extremists. And by the way, this is what happened. It started in California. It worked its way through Cairo. It ended up in Benghazi. All the facts are on the table, asserted to by bipartisan sources, not just the New York Times, as you mentioned, uh, Alex, but the, the Senate Bipartisan Committee. It's all in, and they keep acting like they do on evolution, like they do on climate change. They play these games of, well, we don't know, or there's all a lot of things. The fact, just, there's still questions. There's yeah. still questions. Listen, the guy who served President WMD should have no cause to question anyone the about, you know, about the accuracy of the information presented, because when it comes to what Susan Rice said, it was far closer to the mark than anything they said about Iraq before. For the war. And Senator McCain, he really needs to sit down and read the emails that came out last what, spring that you and I poured over, that everyone else has poured over, before he starts saying that the White House is behind these talking Okay, parts. let's go these to the religious part of this. Not I want to get to the religion. Alex, do some anthropology for me here. <laughs> Why is it so vital to the people, not just hard right, but McCain and then to the right? So it's center right, far right. Why is it such a partisan? And Daryl Ice, who's a complete opportunist, why is this so vital to them? Is this all they got on Hillary down the road is to say Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi? Is it all they got on, that they can claim that these people didn't just make a mistake? They're traitors. Yeah. They're evil. They screw their friends. They kill their friends. It's like the, the, the ultimate evil they've got. Uh, anyway, your thoughts. Why are they I, hanging I think on this the motive, thing? I think Rove's motivation is different than McCain's. I think McCain is intent on launching a broader invective against this administration on foreign policy. He sees them as inept, and he sees himself as kind of the last lion in the Senate that can speak intelligently in his mind towards war, foreign policy, uh, international engagement. And I think he's incredibly frustrated by the fact that he is not pulling the levers on foreign policy and national security. You think security. he thinks he should be president I, rather absolutely. than Absolutely. I think this is absolutely <laughs> sort mean, of residual, uh, sort of the ghost of McCain's future. And then on Rove's, on, on, on Rove's count, if you notice the vocabulary he's using, he talks about arrogance and stubbornness of this administration. That is part of a broader, concerted Republican effort to say that this president is overreaching, to say that he doesn't listen to anybody. I mean, this is a very much a campaign that has been waged during the second part of the Obama administration and even parts of the first and will last, by the way, I think for years to come because, as you point out, Chris, this is the only thing they have. This and Obamacare is basically all they have for 2016. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming on, Alex Wagner, who's on every day at 4, and David Korn, who's often on here <laughs> to our advantage. Coming up, make room in the far-right clown car, the latest candidate, Milton Wolf, the Tea Party physician who's running for the U.S. Senate in Kansas. He's posted gruesome pictures of gunshot fatalities and tacked on a few jokes for kicks. The Senate Conservatives Fund, by the way, sticking with him. Why not? He's one of them. Also, what's the one issue that could really work for Democrats in this tough midterm year? The minimum wage. Even the most, even most Republicans support increasing it, just not the elected ones in Congress. Senator Sherrod Brown joins us. And speaking of politics, making strange bedfalls, what got New York's new, new mayor together with Al Roker this morning. Here's a hint. It had to do with something that has buried a lot of U.S. mayors. Finally, let me finish tonight with Chicken Kiev, the right-wing...